Go ahead and grab your Bibles or the Bibles that are in front of you in the pew and turn to Mark chapter 4. Before I, as I'm going into that thought process of Mark chapter 4, do you guys have like favorite areas of text in the, in the Bible? And you're like, wow, man, that just, that just, uh, it does something to me. It moves me. It excites me. It, it, it makes me so um, glad to be a child of the king in, in the area of the thought process of, man, there's others that learned something and then went on to teach it to others. And that's where in Philippians chapter uh, 2, where uh, the writer there, Paul, is writing a letter. And I like Paul because he... He writes letters. Man, I just want to encourage you, church. I want to, I've been with you. In fact, that's how that one opened. And I, I had been with you before, and I'm not with you right now, but you guys did it. You followed the instructions. And with that, this is what came about in your lives. With that, this is what's going to happen in your lives. And, and so there's just something about uh, gathering and learning and passing on and then we have it to where it was, you know, it wasn't just for the, the church in Philippi or the church in Colossus or the church in Ephesus or the church in Thessal Thessalonica. It is passed on down to us with such great importance that I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I read the letters of Paul and go, wow, that letter is to me. I, I follow the instructions that God handed down generation to generation to generation and unchanging instructions. See, it's not like the instructions ever changed. The instructions are given and, have, have, and they're just binding. But why? Because they're from God and they're for me. And so, man, I, I just get a little bit excited about some of the things that come our way within Scripture to be passed on. Last week, um, speaking of passing on, was the parables. Jesus always taught in parables. And that's how, how chapter 4 opened up. As Jesus was teaching not only his disciples, he, teached, he was teaching those that were gathered along with the disciples. There was a, a, a close following that, as I read Mark chapter 4, it seems like it wasn't just people that came by the wayside. There was a group of people besides the 12 that followed along. Um, in the sense of groupies at, a, at rock concerts or something like that or whatever concert you go to because it's not just rock concerts, there's country, there's all these things. There's even the plays. People are like, I'm going to go even though I've seen it before. I'm, gonna, I'm a follower of what's taken place. And so even with Jesus' teaching, there was the disciples and there was followers that just wanted to take in what he had. And so Jesus always taught in parables Mark chapter 4 tells us and that you can learn something from the parable. And so I want to kind of be right now in Mark chapter 4 verses 21 through 25. Then Jesus asked them, this is right after the, the, the teachings with the farmer and the seeds. He asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But to those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taking, taken away from them. And I, I, have you ever read scripture? And go, what in the world is he talking? I can understand some of it. You know, the lighting of a candle. Uh, here's a fine example. We have candles lit. And if we could black out this entire sanctuary, 
you would still see the candles lit because darkness never can overtake light light always explodes the darkness to where there is no darkness because of light would you hide um, when he talked about a candle you know what I don't know if you guys were ever brought up with the teaching of lighting matches how you're not supposed to light play with matches and stuff it is the same thing in the understanding of being taught you never light that stuff under a bed if you were to put a lit candle under a bed guess what happens the bed catches on fire it's not a good thing so sometimes I'm, I'm reading the scripture going well yeah a lot of that makes sense why you wouldn't do it and why you would place the light on the candlestick in this area of teaching because I was telling on people on Wednesday I believe that you know I'm always praying God um, do we continue in Mark chapter uh, in the the verses in Mark do you have something else he always impresses I have uh, things as I'm going along where God impresses certain things and so I jot it down and he's uh, and in conversation when you talk to God he does impress upon you in certain ways to where you know this one's for a little bit later let's do this one now and so on Wednesday I was saying you know what show to this one area because there's the lamp there is the the kingdom tree that grows there's stuff that that takes place you know do we are we in this area and God really just kind of impressed upon my heart yes this is it why because this lamp thing goes so well after what we had just heard last week the ending of the farmer in the seeds the farmer in the seeds was thrown on the pathway and the birds came and took it right away there was the one where it started to grow the ground looked good but it was actually rocky underneath and so the roots really didn't take and when the california i said the california sun came out it just kind of withered away and died and then there was the one where the the seeds grew up around the uh, thorns there was things in people's lives that just choked out the teachings of God because this mattered more than God and that mattered more than God and so they just kind of choked away and then there was the last where the farmer threw it on good fertile soil and when he threw the seeds down it grew 30 60 and a hundred times more than what was planted and then for Jesus to teach more parables in this setting that Mark writes what a great thing to come and follow the planting on good soil if you're gonna plant on good soil there's a purpose and God works in such a way with it when you light a candle that is a light and you put it on the stand rather than under a basket look what happens there's an old saying, and when I say an old saying, I ran across this, and I'm going to say, uh, hopefully I can say it the way it is, as in super old. It's like a, a, a rule of conduct, okay? And it's descendo decisis. I hope I said that correctly. It also, and I'm going to say how, it, it's such an old saying, this is how it's written. That means, thou wilt learn by teaching. I'm gonna, now I'm going to update it a little. You're going to learn by teaching. And, and, and that concept doesn't sound very... How does that happen? How do, I, how do I learn while teaching? How do I learn and I teach? I'm teaching and while I'm teaching, I'm learning. I, you know, when I read that, that, that thing about uh, learning while teaching... If you are ever in a teaching mode, which we all are, see, some of you are like, ready? Right, Pastor Mark, handle, handle this. If I talk anything about teaching, you're going to look at two, a, a few people. Well, Pastor Brent, he's up there teaching. Or let's look this way. Brother Bud is the Sunday school teacher. Or let's go over farther and Pastor Mark is a teacher teacher. And so you, you look at this thought process, we're all going to like, that thought process of these are the teachers. So how do they learn while they teach? In, the, in that kind of a thought process, it happens. There's things where you're teaching something and all of a sudden something clicks even greater on what you're teaching. So you have just learned while teaching. 
And then, and then I'll just say it this way. Are you ready? You can always learn. Period. I had someone ask me, well, man, Pastor Brett, how do you know to do this with the computer and that with the computer and this with the computer and that with the computer? It started off, first of all, with a computer, with that stupid old AOL sound. Whenever you got on the, the computer, it made that dumb sound. Okay, I don't know why. We had these brilliant people that created a computer and they could not do a mute button on the opening of a computer for that. They, it's, a, it's a learning. Obviously, they've learned <laughs> because it don't make that sound no more <laughs> when you get on, on a, a computer that way. But one of the ways I learned is always having an open mind and open ears and open eyes. And as I taught youth, I would have youth teach me, you know, Pastor Brent, there's a quicker way to do that or there's a better way to do that. And so you begin, the ones you're teaching begin to teach you also and you learn. And so that is how um, on some of the things I have learned, that's how it started with other youth. And then I'm going to tell you what. And then there was the invention of YouTube. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you can learn things off of YouTube, just the way it is. So look it up. If you, got a, if you have a question, um, be careful, because uh, here's the thing about those, some of these inventions, is they're lousy, <laughs> and they will teach you wrong. So be care very careful. But here we have, thou wilt learn by teaching. And I, can I say this? That, well, I'm going to say this. In relation with God, we learn from God, like the scripture that we had earlier about instructions, we learn from God and then we teach it what we have learned. Everyone, please, I, I was making the references to this guy's teaching or that woman's teaching or this person's teaching. We are all, we learn from God, we teach others what we have learned from God we learn more from the things that we are learning, excuse me, the things that we're teaching, we go a little deeper and we learn more from the things that God has given us in teaching. And so then we began to teach more and more and we learn more and more and we teach more and more. And it is for everyone. I say it this way because as you learn, and we're talking about God stuff, as you learn instructions from God, fear leaves. And when fear leaves, it creates the atmosphere for teaching. Because one of the greatest things of teaching, the greatest hindrance of teaching is fear. I know I know this, but I don't know if it can go from here or here out here so that someone's going to grasp it and learn from the teachings that I'm about to express. And so because I'm afraid of how this might happen, then all of a sudden fear stops us from teaching. And God's never designed it that way. We are to be the ones who teach without fear. When God gives it to us in the measure that we have, we then can give even more to someone else. In the King, in the King James, or the New King James Version, what is written here in Mark chapter 4, uh, I believe it's in the area of, let me just look very quickly, it is down in the second part where it is, pay close attention to what you hear, to, and I said, the closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. In the New King James Version, it's this way. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And I, I read that over and over in the New King James Version. Listen and learn. When you listen and you learn, you personally will use it. Or you should personally use it. When you take the instructions given to you from God, this is how I can understand it. 
When you take the instructions that God has given you, which is, I, I, that's why I tell you, ask you grab your Bible or grab the Bible in front of you because if you want instructions, they're right here. You take the instructions that is given to you, you learn these instructions, and the thing you should do, that measure that is given to you, the instructions, you should use it. Improve your life with what you have learned. See, that's the problem, I think, with the world today, is nobody has a problem going to church, or nobody has a problem going to um, a Bible study. The problem is taking what you've learned and using it to improve your life. And I don't understand that. Uh, of some things I don't understand. Wouldn't you want to improve your life? There's people today, my life stinks. Well, here's, let me help you here. Take some instructions and improve your life. It will be better. My life stinks. Let me help you here. There's some instructions to help make your life better. And you know, and, and that should be a simple thing to comprehend because when you look back to some things, some things of the past are great and should stay with us in thought and process, but some things, I'm glad they're gone because they've improved on it and has, have made life way better. Are you ready for one of them? The remote control. Because I'm going to tell you what, my life improved when the remote control came along. Because I'm going to tell you what, we had this policy of you had to stick six feet away from the TV to watch TV. And when dad wanted the old channel changed, remember that the, the kagink, 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 UHF, kagink, kagink. Guess who was the turner? Pop on the head. Hey, go turn that to channel 13. Do, 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 do. My life improved when dad could go kajink, kajink, kajink. Are you understanding? So some things in life got improved because somebody learned something and it improved life. One of the uh, greatest examples, when you are given a measure and it is for your life to be used to improve your life, are you ready? Karate Kid, the very first movie. There's like three or four of them. Karate Kid, the very first one. Karate Kid, uh, and I can't remember his name. It starts with an M. He wanted to learn karate. Why? Because he got beat up. And so because he got beat up, he wanted to learn how to defend himself. At least defend himself. Maybe get a good lick in or two. That's how the movie went. And so he had to learn to improve himself. And if you can remember that movie, if you never saw the movie, I'm going to just give you one scene that was uh, uh, what we used to teach youth. And that was wax on, wax off. Because when he got that, his, his first instructions of karate, see most of the time when you, 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 get, you have this, I want to learn everything to be the best right now. And, and in the movie, and it's the same with God, in most cases, where you have to take instruction and you learn a little, you learn a little, you learn a little on this walk to perfection. Okay? And so in the movie it was, let me show you this. He put these two gloves on, he got into a car and he said, wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. And that young karate kid, he hated it. He wanted to, what the hell? He's waxing some guy's car. See, and sometimes when we're learning stuff, we hate this learning process because we don't actually see that it improves our life. Because when he learned wax on, wax off, it was the move when someone was striking at you, you would block this way, you would block that way. And all of a sudden, that small little thing improved his life. Because, ready? When someone's taking a whack, which will hurt you and make life stink, instead you learned wax on, wax off, and nothing hit this. His life improved dramatically. It is the same with God. What God gives us, it helps us in everything. It helps us with defense. 
Wax on, wax off was a defensive mechanism. In the scriptures, in instructions, are defensive maneuvers that are needed to improve your life. Even to one, my favorite, there's all these defensive things. But have you, ever, have you ever tried to do a defensive thing and someone's quicker, you know, they can jab quicker or it hurts harder and it comes in and so my defensive moves, they're just not working. And Satan comes in with all these temptations and I'm having a problem with defensive moves. And when I succumb, when I go ahead and do what Satan has given me, had made it look so pretty, it hurts me. It makes life more miserable. And my life has not improved. I want you to know this. My, one of my favorite scriptures, I did not look it up. You can look it up yourself. It goes this way. I'm going to paraphrase. He has given us the greatest escape from any temptation. Any temptation. Nothing can come up against me that God has not given me an escape. I just have to find it hold on to it, and I guarantee you, when that temptation is in my face, my life will improve because I will not walk into temptation because God has given me the escape. He has given me the instructions how to walk away from it. He has given me the instructions how to look away from it. He has given me the instructions to plug my ears to it. See, let me help you out here. See, you hear a bunch of gossip? That's not of God. He gives you the escape. You see something over there you shouldn't be looking at? He gives you the escape. You know, I, I, I would teach young people this right here. Well, I don't know, because look at that. Dude, that's pretty. You know, I, you know what? Here's what God has given you. Not only has he given you eyes, but he's also more than likely given you a neck or a body. Turn it away and look away. That's what's going to help you and improve your life. Wax on. Wax off. In doing the instructions, see, some things, be, it, it, I, I'll tell you what, people don't believe me, it gets easier and easier. A blink of an eye. It's not this straining to look away. It's like, look away. It gets easier and easier. I'm sorry, did you say something? Because I don't listen to that anymore. It, get, it gets easier and easier. You know what? That really wasn't that funny. It gets easier and easier. And all of a sudden, you're going to understand. Wax on, wax off. Because I've taken these instructions, not just on a piece of paper, but I've taken them to my heart to where I don't need to walk around with this. I do have it, but I don't need to walk around with it because it's right here. And God puts it right here. And it's always there. And that mechanism of defense is so much easier. And my life has gotten so much better in doing this. And then I'm going to tell you this, that in learning, he gives me more. A greater understanding. See, people we, we, in churches today, they walk around, I'm not at your level. I almost hate that thought process. What do you mean you're not at my level? Because my level is only this. I'm a child of the king. That's my level. We have all been given the exact same thing, the exact same Savior, the exact same instructions. The thing is, I decided within my heart to take it. So if, you, if, if you're going to go on levels and you want to be on my level, here's the plan. Take the instructions. Take the instructions and use them. And use them. And by doing that, God's going to give you more and more understanding. If we're at the point of, well, I don't really get any of it and I don't understand it, I love that phrase. Because that is one of the, the if I can't understand or I don't understand and I, and I have that within my heart and my thought process, that's like my low level of, okay, God, you're here and I'm at this un not understanding level, okay? And that's the point. Everyone, to have a turning point, has to realize where they're at. And if I don't understand, there must be a way to understand. 
And so I have to take myself, I don't understand. Can I help, uh, on this instruction thing, in the world that we live in today, this instruction thing right here, when you sit there and tell me I don't understand these scriptures or I don't understand that scripture, I'm going to put it in a pastoral thought process for me. And so you can not like the pastor for saying this. When you say I don't understand this stuff, that's my thought process saying, good. Because here's the plan. Here's the wax on, wax off. Go to church. Go to Sunday school. Go to Wednesday night Bible study. Go to activities that are going to place you in a place where God is teaching. Otherwise, how else are you going to understand? Now, because I pointed out some teachers, you'll never learn English if you do not attend an English class. You know what? You'll never learn more by not attending an English class. Ready? Shakespeare. To be or not to be. And for the most part, people go like, yeah, I know that. But they don't know what comes after it. Why? Because they did not attend the English class to learn. You learn more, you learn more, you learn more by placing yourself in a place that brings on that education that you can pass on to someone else. So, go to church. <laughs> I gotta, I'll say it over and over. Go to church. Go to Sunday school. Go to Bible study. It's not a pastor thing. It is the way God has designed everyone. Everyone. My greatest example was Jesus, who for the most part in every story that is written about him in Scripture, on Sabbath, he would go and do something on Sabbath that was godly, or he would be in the, te the temple. And the majority of them, he's in the temple, or on the way to the temple, or he's after the temple. That's the story of Jesus. Go to church. So, an understanding and learning in these last few minutes. So then what do we do? See, because you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this one. It is easy for someone to stand up here and go, hey, you see the scriptures? Take them and use them and let them be who you are. It's easy to stand up here and say that. It is easy to say, this is the light. This is the light in the darkness. Those who read this will have a, 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 a bright light within them of understanding. And they will have a better, improved life as they take this in and use it. What do we do? What do we do? So it's easy to stand up here and say, take your Bibles, read them besides Sunday school, church, and Bible study. Read them on your own in the morning with a cup of coffee. If you're not a morning person, Read them at lunch. See, yes, see God, God's a 24-hour-a-day God's a thing. So it don't matter when you get up or anything. Take the scriptures on your own. And it's easy to stand up here and say that. It's easy to stand up here and say that as you take in the instructions, there is no age limit. We can learn always something new we can be <laughs> can I say this because the older we get we forget things which is okay because then it's like learning it all over again wow that's really cool that's okay too you are still learning and there is no age limit at what you are learning to pass on okay so then what do we do Let me ask a couple of questions and thought processes. How does being part of the church look for you? See, I start off with the light. Okay? Don't hide that light under a, a, a bed. This brings light to the darkness. How, so then, can I, for a learning thought process? So how does being part of the church being part of the light in the church, look for you. Let me ask another question connected to you with being a part of the church. How
How is that given to someone else? How is you being a part of the church given to someone else? So I have been thinking about this for a while. What is it, God? How do we go from being a, a part of the church, sitting here, singing here, singing here, playing here, going down and, and being in Sunday school, teaching Sunday school? How does all of the church thing and me being a part of it, how is that given to someone else? Some of us like, okay, do we do, are you ready? Do we do invite cards? Do we, do we place in, in the hand of every person a card so you can walk around and, hey, you know what? Come to church. Here, here's a card. Put it on your refrigerator. Has the times. Um, I'm, maybe I'll, I'll pick you up. Whatever. Or, 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 is, or is you giving church, are you giving who you are as part of the church, is that going to have coffee with someone? Sitting, paying your $8 for coffee at Starbucks. Is that what it is? Or is it going to lunch with someone and, and, and going to, I'm going to lower it down, going to Wendy's and finding the dollar menu or whatever and, and going, hey, you know, let's just sit down and have a, a tiny little slider cheeseburger. It's only a dollar and a dollar drink. And, you know, let me treat you. Two dollars. Let me treat you. Um, I always t tell the kids because they love the dollar store. You just got to remember that extra dime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 220, let's sit down and eat lunch. Is that, what it, is that me being a part of the church, giving it to someone else, having lunch with them? Let me ask you this. What is the reason we give others that we are part of the church? I believe. I believe. I'm, you know, I'm, the, I'm the child of the king. And he is the king of the church. And I am a part of the church which is part of his kingdom, and that's who I am. So then how do other people see this light? How do they see the light? How do they see that I'm going to walk out of this place and be something out there, or be something with my best friend, or be something with my neighbor? How am I going to be the church light out there? Some people are going to sit there, man, I, I, I don't know about an invite card or anything like that. Let me just talk about the church for these. Uh, uh, we got a new clock. I love it. <laughs> I'm watching it to the few minutes. Okay? And I get to this point about being the church. Who we are as the church. I don't know about you guys, but as, as the pastor, I, things roll through my head. Um, we would have been well into a, a, an advanced mode of, of the Harvest Festival. We're not having the Harvest Festival this year. This would be like the second year we're not having it. And, and I, as a, a pastor, as a leader of the church, I had debated even bringing any of it up. But it has dawned on me, may I say this? Some things you learn. One of the things I've learned in many staff meetings and many leadership meetings within the church is, you know what? Stop kicking a dead horse. That was the phrase. What does that mean? If something is not really presenting the gospel, changing lives, what I was just talking about, improving lives, if something's not really being this absolute light of God shining in the community, then stop kicking a dead horse. The Harvest Festival was great for this. Ready? We were in the community. We're part of the community. And as they trick-or-treated, we fed them, we played with them, we sat with them. They never came to church. It was really a community event that we participated in. There's nothing wrong with that. But God, as your pastor leader, has put, placed me in this kind of a thought process. We need to be more oriented of really being a light that really changes lives where they become part of the family of God. Not just an event within the community. And if you want to be an event within your community, you know what? Dress up, go out, and walk with your friends in the neighborhood on Halloween night. 
Some of you are going to freak out on that. Whoa, it's Halloween. I don't care what label you give it because when I talk to someone, I don't talk to them as a demon or as anything like that. I talk to them as a friend in my neighborhood. I see you all the time. And guess what? Now you're stuck with me for eight blocks, slowly walking and stopping in front of a door and finding out who you are and what's happening in your life. That is being a light in the community on what people will call the darkest night. I don't care what you call it, because stop looking at what is the darkest night and start looking at what God has placed you as in that particular moment. And so, yes, last year we walked, um, and, and we, then what we do this year, we strategize. What's the best way to be with people on that night? And so, yeah, uh, and I, I don't mean to call the Harvest Festival a dead horse, what I mean is you let things go by the wayside so that God will let you be a, a light as part of this church, outside of this church. So rather than having a fall festival, as we're, um, please come on Wednesday, Wednesday, October the 16th is not a Bible study. It is actually the church business meeting. And the church business meeting will talk about direction of the church, the finances of the church. I'm not going to talk about finances. I'm just going to close out. Pastor Mark, in fact, you can come on up. I'm going to close out with this. That what's going to take place is we're going to talk about the church moving forward as I'm talking. Man, God wants us to be a life-changing element on this corner. So rather than the Harvest Festival, next year would be great during the fall to have a church gathering that takes place after a Sunday, late September, very first one or two weeks into October, in the back parking lot, eating a meal together. There'll be canopies out there, so you ain't got to worry about the sunshine. It'll be only 70-some degrees at the most. Um, this is how it is on the coast. And, and so the later the better. There'll be canopies. There'll be food. There'll be something for the kids. And let me say this. The neighbors will see, not that the church is doing something on a community night, but the church is actively doing something on a day that no one has. And so I'm, gonna, I'm going to impress upon that, that we gather late, uh, late, late fall um, to, um, in the parking lot, bounce houses, Food. And I'm going to tell you this, for a couple of years now we've had on our sign, worship, connect, thrive. It's been on the screen, worship, connect, thrive. We do well with worship. We gather for worship. We struggle on connection because connection is not just within the worship. Connection is connection. And that's why I want to eat outside, not inside outside showing the world we connect together as we eat and when you connect more than the hour on a Sunday you will find your life will thrive it used to say grow which is the same thing not only grow but thriving in that growth what is the church as a light Thanksgiving dinner Another time, a little later, later fall, where we gather together and we eat. And guys, for me, that's a joy. It's not church. It's not Bible study. It's sitting together and going, wow, man, I, first of all, I love you guys. And that's why we eat together. And you know, in that one, I'm going to tell you what, there's times where other people come in. That's our opportunity to show them we eat together. We love each other. That light, we learn more to grow that way. Um, down the road, Christmas choir songs. Down the road, a spring gathering of eating together. You know, maybe it's old church of God. They All they do is eat. Yeah, good. We connect. I don't have to sit there and quote Bible scriptures to you. Let's connect as God would have us as a people. Oh, just so you, if you're wondering where's pastor, get some of that thought process. Acts chapter 2. Go and read it. <laughs> they ate. Now if you want to rather go, what, how are we going to be a light? A men's group. 
a women's group. The kid, we call it kid zone. The kids group thrives and, and grows. Uh, a youth group, I heard that mentioned in a prayer a couple of weeks ago, a youth group. And however else we can have, I talked about not just a Wednesday night Bible study, but maybe we need to connect together in each other's homes once in a while. Let's just gather together, sit on the couch, talk scripture. So we get ready to close in scripture uh, and sing this last song. Two verses as Pastor Mark comes up. John chapter 1 verse 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And my last one, John chapter 8 verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us stand. I, I would pray that you would have the light of life. I look around. I know you guys know. And, but like I said at the very beginning, learning and teaching. Learning more and teaching. We don't know it all. And if there is one person that is brave enough to raise their hand and say they know it all, I'm going to tell you what I tell my grandkids. Is that a challenge? Because I will definitely find something you do not know <laughs> as my challenge. I don't mean that in a mean way. I mean it this way. We can always learn. We can always grow. We can always thrive. And God will always bring you through with it to not just be you, but to be that to the world. Let's change. Be a change person in this world with God. Let me pray. God, thank you for this time. As we worship in song, May our hearts be drawn closer to you. May we learn more of you. And when we learn, may we be giving it to someone else. Not just holding on, woo, look what I got, but giving it to someone else. And then God, when we use that measure, may our life improve with it. When we get that measure even more, may we not hoard it, but continue to move forward with it. God, help us be the church on this place for what you would have. Not our plans, but yours. In Jesus' holy name, amen.